What's going on everyone? We are rounding the corner again to finishing this car again. I know I've had so many people comment like, what are you doing? The car was done. You drove it. It was ready to get going. Yeah, I am so much happier this time around. It took a couple of months. Uh, I think we started this in February, February to March, March to April. Today's May 2. I am hoping to have this car driving and everything by June 1. We'll see how that goes, but that's that's my goal right now. Not racing, because I want to drive this car for, I don't know, I want to put 1,000, 2,000 miles on it, 1,500 miles. Um, make sure all the bugs are worked out of this thing before I even waste time on the dyno. I see a lot of people go to the dyno with cars that are not ready to be dyno tuned with all sorts of issues. That I, I don't know if they think a tuner is going to solve all this stuff or what, but I that's not me. I want to go there. I want Derek to get in my car. I want him to tune it, make reliable power. See you later. Pay the man. Have a good night. So my goal is to have him come down, clean up the tune because it's so bad right now. Clean up the tune to the point I can drive it. You know, not necessarily do sit there do 160 mile an hour highway pulls. But just enough for me to drive it around, put some mileage on it, and, and make sure everything's right with the car before I even waste his and mine time by putting it on the dyno untested. Now, that doesn't matter anymore. Let's move on. What we're going to start doing today is stripping this thing down. What? We're going to strip everything off this engine bay. Um, <laughs> I'm not taking the motor out. I am going to take the motor plate off, and it's just simply to paint this tube front. And I'm knocking and my dog's freaking out. Remy! Come here. Come here. Come here. It's just me. It's just me. Hey! This, this dog. She's protective. So, um, I'm going to take the intercooler off, which I'm going to coat this with lizard skin. I was asking some people... This dog will ever shut up. I was asking people, these can condensate in real humid weather. And you got it really cold, so I'm going to coat it with lizard skin. I'm going to paint my intercooler pipe in black while it's off. I, I just think it's going to look better. I painted the intake lid. Uh, the single stage really, really dulled out on it, which I'm not too thrilled about. But I can always pull it off later and clear coat it. Uh, and we're going to tape it off. I'm not going to paint it on this side. I'm going to put it back on the ground, roll it over in the other garage, my paint booth. And we're going to... Tape off the whole car, tape off the, uh, put the engine on a jack stand so I can take the motor plate off. Um, I got to order a engine limiter. Motion Racers makes a really cool one for a hundred bucks. And it just involves bolting to the old motor mount bolt and two, uh, two tabs on the frame rail so it doesn't let the engine move back and forth. What else? I think that's about it. I finished running my coolant line last night. I ran the other hose, so all the coolant hoses are set. The only thing I gotta do is wire it. But the relay is up on that board, and I don't wanna run big power wires all the way back to the fan, so I'm gonna take that off, put the relay in the trunk so I can run short power wires from the battery, like on your fuel pump, and just run the trigger wire from the ECU back to it. Other than that, gotta fill it up and Pray all my welds held on the radiator and overflow. <laughs> we'll see. If not, the worst happens, they get pulled down, drained, and I, I, you know, clean up the weld and try again. Trial and error. But instead of me rambling, let's get this thing torn down. China Bay headers got me. It came with these two and a half inch. Um, V-bands, which the V-bands feel fine, but the nut just galled the crap out of the threads. Cheap stainless nut. Um, I'm going to bring these to work. Both of them did it. I'm going to bring these to work and see if I could just run a tap down these threads and 
hopefully save them so I don't have to buy new V-bands. was super fast, huh? Uh, you can see the only thing left on here is the water pump. And the only reason it's left is because that holds the motor plate on. When I get it to the other side, I'm going to put a jack under the oil pan. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully I'll do it quick because I think my jack slowly leaks overnight. So I'll put my floor jack under there so I can take this off and this off. So I can make sure to get these motor tabs plated. Uh, whoa. Motor plate tabs painted and get behind there and everything so it don't rust on mommy. One thing I'm going to do before then though is that I, I really couldn't do it with everything on there. I got some uh, leftover plates that I'm going to put right about here. I know it's hard to see but I'm, I'm going to actually trim these down a lot. And I'm going to weld them to the bar and to the motor plate tab and what right at the level of the plate. And what this does is it gives you a shelf to put this on when you put your motor back in. So you're not dangling this thing from a hoist trying to line up bolts. So you can drop it down on these tabs on each side and um, it'll help you line everything up. While it's off, I have a couple things to weld up. I'm going to, I got some Dash 16 fittings from uh, Mike at, over at Monkey Fab, which I'm gonna weld to here. This will save me some time with fittings and everything. Boom, boom. I'm gonna weld those up. I'm also going to do my waste gates, because I got them all marked. So there's going to be one gate there, one gate there. So I got to sit there and cut this all out and grind it out and fit it up. Paint those. I got to tack some beads around this so it doesn't slip out. Granted, that goes to the turbo, so I don't know if that would actually go anywhere. Okay, don't make fun of my tape job or my cover job. Um, I'm not going all out on this. This is temporary. Uh, next winter, I'll pull the motor and the training out and I'm gonna redo the whole engine bay, uh, shave a bunch of holes and do this in a two-stage paint. Um, so this is just, I gotta get some paint on here so this thing doesn't rust. It's gonna look like crap if I don't and I won't wanna even bring this car out if this whole two front end's rusty and everything's in the car. So I'm just gonna splash some paint on it. Uh, I'm not going crazy. I got some self edge primer. I'm going to prime it and I have single stage in a can that I'm just going to spray on it and maybe a coat of clear and call it a day. So we've already scuffed it, um, taped it all off, matched it off, um, and cleaned it with some acetone and I get some primer on it. Alright, we'll let that dry. I already see there's a little spot on this tube that got some fish eye in it. Um, I'm going to let that dry. It's a little humid out today so it's probably going to take a little while longer than normal. Fix that, blast some paint on it. Let's lay some coat on it. It's all painted. Um, it's far from the best job. I literally just spray bombed this to get color on it. It's not perfect. I actually ran out of the single stage paint. There's a couple, I just saw a couple of spots that are a little light. Don't really care right about now. It's covered. I can assemble everything. You probably won't even see the little bit of mess ups and uh, we'll, we'll get rocking and rolling. I let this dry over there for a little while and then I got this heavy pig pushed back over to this side so we could start the final assembly. 
Um, it came out pretty good. It looks like crap on the strut towers because it's not exact match. This was just single stage mixed up in an aerosol by a paint coat. It wasn't perfectly matched to the body. Um, whoever painted this car added a lot of gold into it. A lot more than it's supposed to have. I don't know why, but it looks like crap where I taped it off. I absolutely hate it, but next winter, this is all getting taken out anyway, and um, I'm redoing the whole bay. I'm going to shave a bunch of holes in the strut tower and the firewall and repaint the whole bay anyway, so I'm not really too concerned about it. So now we are going to head into final assembly with this. Everything's pretty much done. I really don't have to do anything. There's a couple of things I got to do, but it, it's not too bad. Uh, I already got the turbo mounted, drain line in, downpipe on. Everything's just loose till I get the whole turbo kit on. Uh, coolant reservoir on the other side. You can see, I know a bunch of people said something about insulating the uh, lower radiator. You can see I got a piece of rubber hose on there to protect that from the intercooler. So we're going to we're going to move ahead and and start getting stuff bolted to the car. Let me let me show you guys something that's pretty cool and I want you to know this is why I went with Turbo Smart wastegates and blow up valves. So for one, you can see the size of it, right? Now, I wanted to bring my vacuum line over to this side. Now, any other wastegate, you would be um, getting your Allen keys out and uh, taking these bolts out one by one. But with a Turbo Smart, it's just got a lock ring. You put that where you want. I have nine pound springs in here and you just you see that spin that down nifty little coilover looking tool and that's it you're done that's why I run turbo smart I mean this thing's tiny and that's how easy it is to take apart so if you're on the dyno and you need to make a spring change, even hot, this really isn't gonna affect you too much because you're not sitting here one screw, one screw, six screws to try to get this top off and then put it all back. Now I don't like how that's upside down now, so I'm gonna swap these two ports and take it back off. <laughs> it's, it's coming together. Uh, I'm pretty much putting a couple hours a night into it. I'm trying, trying to meet a deadline I've set for myself. As of right now, it's looking pretty good. You can see I jumped ahead and got a bunch of stuff assembled on. Everything's tight. Turbo's mounted, hot sides on. Wastegates are in. The only thing I'm going to have to do is have to buy another piece of um, inch and three quarter, or whatever this is. I don't even remember. And uh, weld it down a little bit further so when the waste gets open, it's not blasting my ATI dampener. Uh, intercoolers in, my two, three and a half inch clamps will be here tomorrow, so that can be done. But these are in and solid. Um, radiator hoses in. I just have to uh, secure them all the way back. And I went and picked up a uh, thread setter, nut, sir, nut setter. Uh, whatever you want to call it, so I can drill where I have the uh, self tappers and put those in and get that all situated. Got to order brake lines. Um, I want to order new coil harnesses. I really don't like the ones I made, they look like crap. I'm probably going to buy some stockers just to throw in for now, even though I think those look like crap too. But wiring specialties charges like $130 for coil harnesses. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but it's not a major thing because if I need to, I can throw mine back in. What else? What else are we working on here? Uh, I got to start doing the water lines for the intercooler. 
Probably going to buy a tank and some fittings this week, and then I'll probably buy a pump later. Tank and fittings is going to be over two, three hundred dollars. Water pumps like another hundred eighty dollars. But that I don't need that to start the car. Oh, the one thing I got to do is I'm going to take off my Jiffy Tight um, transmission uh, cooler connectors. Um, I've talked to a couple people with LS motors and they are raising the pressure through the roof. So I'm going to take those off and just put dash six lines in and put connectors in, you know, uh, unions right there to get those out because they're saying it restricts it too much for an LS motor. We all know LS motors, you'll wipe thrust bearings out. And the last thing I want to do is uh, wipe out a built motor in, you know, four or five passes. Got to have Derek. Uh, clean the tune up. You know, it, it's down to the the nitpicky stuff. You still got to get a motor limiter. I keep forgetting that. The good news is I can just take that header off and uh, weld that in. It, you know, you got to weld two little tabs to the frame rail. That's no big deal. Um, I'm waiting on Doug from Motion Raceworks or whoever at Motion Raceworks. They're supposed to be making a throttle cable bracket for flipped throttle bodies on a high ram. Um, I'm patiently waiting. I don't even know what I did with the bracket I took off. I haven't seen that thing in weeks, months. I'd rather not flip my throttle body back over, but if I have to go that route, I will. I think the hood's cut open far enough now where it really doesn't matter. But I'll do that, need be, and then I would need a new throttle cable. We're getting there. We are so close to getting this done. Um, I'm ten times happier with this setup. I'm glad I tore it all apart. I don't care what anybody says. This setup, the other one was practice. This is practice, but much better. <laughs> um, I'm very happy with this. We're going to let this rock. We're going to see how this does. Um, I'm probably going to go through the whole season with it, if, you know, in case something happens. And we'll just play it by ear. And then uh, it'll get completely torn down next winter. Whatever needs to be changed will be changed. I'm hoping to go over to a Holly Dominator setup and full wiring harness for that. So I'll have my MS3 Gold Box for sale. Um, also, I don't know if I told you guys, but I am now a Holly and Holly brand dealer. Um, if you need anything, send me an email. Race status. Uh, ind at yahoo.com hit me up on Instagram or my Facebook with your needs let me know they have like 30 or 40 other brands so if you need anything from Flowmaster or Race Pack or Excel or or uh, Haze anything I'm I'm your guy <laughs> so we'll, we'll we'll leave that there uh, I don't know what the next video is gonna be we're gonna find out I'm not entirely sure we'll play it by ear you know, it is what it is. So, like usual, guys, grab a cold one, get out in the garage, and work on your hot rod. Have a good night.